Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is D, and today I am inside Dishonored. I am playing on the latest version of Vorpex, Vorpex 0.9, which has just come out. And I am playing also on the latest version of the Oculus Runtime 0.8, which has also just come out. So there's a lot of new stuff going on here. Uh, just to give you an update on why I haven't updated in a little while, I've been working at Jaunt, and they just moved to a new location, which is even farther away, so I'm commuting two hours there and two hours back every single day. But I am going to be moving into my new Mountain View home in the next, uh, probably in the next one or two weeks. So after that, um, I'll, I'll have a much shorter commute, have a lot more time for making videos. So look forward to that. Um, now, the reason I picked back up Vorpex is it has a lot of exciting new improvements. Let's say hi to Admiral Havlock here. Glad to see here. you got your rest, Corvo. You'll need it. What do you think of this, Admiral Havlock? Does that not impress you? I have magic powers? Okay, I guess not. So, um, when I'm inside the game here, it's a lot, lot, lot smoother than it used to be. And if you're watching this on your monitor, you'll notice that there, there might be black uh, black edges that come in when I turn my head rapidly. Uh, they'll be a lot more visible if I walk out walk outside here for a minute. So, this is the part of Dishonored that uh, just has the lowest frame rate of anywhere in the game, of all the places I've tested. It's it uh, was very noticeable before when I was playing um, on previous versions of Vorpex. I would get like you know 15 frames a second in this part, and it was super bad. Um, but now I can actually move my head around quite smoothly. Um, and the actual frame rate is still really bad, but uh, the latest version of Vorpex has a feature called Asynchronous Time Warp. I might have mentioned it before. Um, and the gist of how it works is that every time that it's time for a new frame, it takes the last rendered frame, the last frame that it completed rendering, uh, whenever that was, and shifts it based on how far I've moved my head since that frame was rendered. And the result is that you get this very smooth head motion um, even when the frame rate the game is rendering at is actually quite low. And you will start to see uh, artifacts, like those black coming in at the edges. Uh, they become very noticeable when the frame rate drops very low. Um, but your head motion is still reasonably smooth, so it's actually not so bad. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on a mission here. Um, so, there are a lot of cool new features in the uh, newest version of Vorpex. One of them I really enjoy, which I'm going to show you in a second. So, see how it says Samuel when Beach Works Talk? Out, just give the word. So, the, the latest version has this feature where the, uh, the GUI, the, the, the 2D elements of the game, can actually be rendered at a smaller scale. And that enables me to read them without having to even uh, use the edge peak mode. So in the previous versions of Vorpex, I heavily depended on edge peak mode in order to read things. So, I'll, uh, so edge peak citizens. mode is when I press the middle Do mouse button and it zooms out and then I can see the whole screen like this. And then I press it again and I can zoom back in. And, and that's useful if I want to like look at the, the corners of the screen, which are otherwise very difficult to see. To Ooh, a key. I didn't notice that before. Um, so say I have a book here. Now you can see, so before, before, this book would have looked like this. Now, when the book is like this, I can't read the book. There's these words up here in this corner here where I'm moving my mouse. I can't see those words, so I can't read them. They're too far out of my field of view. Uh, but this new feature, which works in at least some titles, including Dishonored, lets me hold down the Alt key and then scroll my mouse wheel. And I can actually zoom this 2D portion of the HUD in and out. So if I zoom it to about here, I can actually read a lot of this text. I can read Havelock Log Entry 1. It has been days since our men were dispatched to stash weapons. Stash weapons for Corvo in the old sewer. So I can, I can read this. It's, it's still quite small text, and the resolution is not great, so it's a bit difficult to read, but at least I can read it. Um, I can still go into edge peak mode if I want to, and if I do this, I'll probably go ahead and just zoom it all the way out, like this. And then I can just read it by moving my head around like this. So that's, you can still use edge peak mode, and it's an option. But what's really useful about this is now I can use HUD elements that before I couldn't really use. So let me zoom that in here. So for example, if I hit the tab key, I can bring up my weapon selector. Before, this weapon selector was basically unusable because it was so enormous that it went throughout my field of vision. Um, and I, I just couldn't see any of these icons. 
but now I could I can use this regularly. It's actually pretty usable. So I'm gonna switch my crossbow. There we go. So anytime I want, switch my blink, switch my crossbow, and now you guys can actually see what weapons I'm switching to. Ooh, money. Okay, so I really like this improvement in the HUD. Sometimes it's a little weird because the game tries to overlay things. For example, when the guards get alerted, it'll put a little ring around their heads. And because the GUI has been shrunk down, it no longer lines up with their heads properly. So there's little things like that that don't quite work, but for many purposes it works quite well. I could even turn on the health and mana meters now if I wanted to, but I, I kind of prefer those off. And I can leave on these eat things, I can leave on objective markers if I want to. Objective markers are really useful on the first playthrough of the game if you're not sure where to go. I know where everything is in this game now, so I'm just going to leave them off. There we go. Hey Wallace. Oh, he's cleaning the bed. The shadows are still really messed up in this game. Uh, their stereoscopic depth is all wrong. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, but the, the, the low persistence works great. I'm at full frame rate. My head tracking is super smooth and everything looks out to be at the right scale and it's it's just it's a great experience in the latest version of vorpex better than it's ever been before i would say that dishonored was for many people just simply unplayable shut up wallace i'm talking and um but now it's actually quite smooth most of the time and i think a lot of people at least those who can tolerate moving around with wasd keys would be able to play this now by the outsider himself. What is this? This is me smashing things. Deal with it. Okay, I'm gonna go on a mission. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the setup I did here. I made some, uh, mostly I just used the settings from um, the recommended settings uh, from Vorpex for Dishonored, but I did make a few changes. Um, so the first change I made is if I hit my middle mouse button, you'll see that my aspect ratio here is not, um, is not 16.9. This is actually 8.9. Um, and 8.9 is the aspect ratio that is used by the Oculus Rift for each eye because it needs to split its 16.9 screen into two pieces for the left and right eyes. So each eye is 8.9. And I actually set my resolution in game. If I go to my graphics options um, and I go into video settings, you'll see I've set my resolution to 1280 1440p. This is a custom resolution that I created uh, in my NVIDIA control panel specifically for this purpose. Um, 1280-1440 is an 8-9 aspect ratio, and it's a little bit uh, bigger than 968-1080, uh, so I get, um, I, I get a little bit more resolution before warping, which is what you want. This is pretty similar to the uh, render target resolution per eye used by native Oculus Rift applications. So this lets me get quite good quality and also quite good performance. I'm actually rendering a lot less pixels than I was before while also getting better quality than I was before. So it's really exciting that I can do this. So you have to set um, under options uh, graphics, you have to set FOV to 100. So before, I was actually using a custom Vorpix script where you would hit F4 and it would set your FOV to like 140, which is way over here. Like you can't even set it in game. You have to have a custom script to set it. Um, but now I'm just setting my FOV to 100 in game, which is the actual field of view of the Oculus Rift. And the reason for this is because when you're running at a regular 16-9 aspect ratio, the way Vorpix works is it renders the scene at like 140 degrees field of view, then it chops off the left and right sides of the view, reducing it down to 100 degree field of view and creating that 8-9 aspect ratio that you need. But since we, uh, my resolution is actually an 8-9 aspect ratio now, I can just set the FOV to 100 and it'll just work. Um, so that, um, that saves me quite a bit of pixels rendering. And then, in addition, I, uh, when I first did that, I found that the world looked very small. All the people looked like, like toy soldiers. Well, not quite that small, but very small. So I went into here and I set my separation strength from 1 down to 0.6. And that just made everything look a little bit bigger. Um, so that the people look more people-sized. Um, you, it might vary depending on the game, what, what exactly you have to set that to. All right, let's go, Samuel. Just wondering, sir, if you thought about perhaps seeing Piero before venturing into the old. I don't need to see Piero. I'd recommend going with the best gear you can get together. Okay, before I jump into this cutscene, 
I am going to switch into virtual cinema mode. Virtual cinema mode is a new feature I've I'm never shown before are, um, in Vorpex. And basically, it's just it allows you to play the game on a, in a virtual service. cinema where you're just sitting in front of a giant screen, uh, which is not something you could do before. And this is very useful for parts of the game. First of all, it's useful for 2D I games. I look forward to my adventures with you, sir. Oh, my God, Samuel. Um, it's very useful for any kind of game where... Let me put Ready my stuff go. away here. Just give the signal. Let's let's go, Samuel. So what we're seeing here is actually what the game is rendering. And um, so the game renders a little bit strangely at this 8-9 aspect ratio. So we'll, we'll see more examples of that as we're sailing with Samuel here. Oddly, the screen is still in full stereoscopic 3D, even though it is a 2D screen. It's like watching a 3D TV. Um, and I am still moving the mouse with my head, even though I am using this virtual screen. Got this rain effect going on. It's like my screen is wet here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the virtual cinema, get back in there. Jump inside the screen. Enter my TV. All right, here I am once again. And once again, my head tracking is smooth. Um, you will see those black borders creeping in. And I'm going to get started on my mission here. Oh, they're throwing bodies off the bridge. So as usual, um, I'm putting this video up in stereoscopic 3D. I did this by uh, capturing. So there's an option in Vorpex, which I'll show you in just a second after I take out this guy. Hey, what is it? I think that last one was moving. What? All these yeah, rats the little all over it. Not possible. What the fuck? I'll get to Oops. The what? I did here. not mean to use that weapon. Here you are. Lost it. I'm doing really badly at this game today. It's fine. Got you now. Take that. I'm just going to teleport over here. Okay, I'm just going to hide for a bit. Okay, I'm running away, running away. Okay, I should be safe up here. Probably. Okay. All right, now that I'm up here. So uh, one unfortunate thing about Vorpex is that in a normal VR game, you can't adjust your pitch up and down with the mouse. You have to use your head for that. And that's quite on purpose. Um, in Vorpex, you can still move your pitch up and down with the mouse. And I don't like to do that. I prefer to only move up and down using my head. Ah, oh, shit, they found me. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just going to hide down in here. Oh, this is cozy. Okay. Put my stuff away. Um, use a potion. Now, like I was saying, um, uh, so you can still move your pitch with your mouse. Um, and if your pitch is too high, like this, and you turn your head left and right, the world will turn in this really uncomfortable way, um, which is just an effect of how the game does its camera management. So you really want to level out your camera like this so it's nice and horizontal. And then it'll be a lot more natural when you turn your head. And you can still turn your head up like this, and it'll work OK. Um, unfortunately, that means I do have to be careful to try and maintain my pitch at a level point and keep adjusting it over time. Um, and if, if this were a native VR experience, none of that would be an issue. OK, what else? Um, so I mentioned that I'm recording this in stereoscopy, uh, stereoscopically. And um, the way I'm doing that is I'm going into my Vorpix settings here. And I lost my mouse again. I think the mouse sensitivity is just a little bit enormously high. Um, there's a new feature called Crystal Image. I like this a lot. Um, I'm not. I think it's actually just a uh, high, high quality uh, warp function that it's using. So if you turn it to low, you'll see everything, all this text in front of me, get just a little bit fuzzier, a little bit blurrier. And if I set it to high, it's a little bit sharper. So I think that's a, a high quality warp that's being used there. Um, or maybe it's just a sharpening function that's being used. I don't honestly know how it works. Fix black smear. Black smear is a problem with DK2, where if you're in a really dark place, you'll see a lot of smearing. Um, you can turn this on to 
to avoid it. I'm not having any trouble with that, so I'm just going to leave it off. And I have direct mode mirror window here set to full size. And what that does is it, um, it, it sets up the Oculus mirror window, which shows exactly what I see on the screen um, on my, on my uh, desktop so that I can record it using OBS. Uh, by the way, I am recording using OBS. Um, I'm recording from my screen, and that is slowing down the game. So my frame rate is actually quite a bit lower than it would be if I turned off OBS, um, unfortunately. And um, so you're not getting a complete impression of what the frame rate is like. It's actually quite a lot better than this. Um, when I turn off OBS, it's very, very smooth moving my head around, even in very rich and complex environments, like down at the Hound Pits pub. Um, so I turn this on, and then I'm capturing with OBS. And then afterwards, I unwarp it with my um, unwarp VR tool. And um, you'll still be able to see the black edges creeping in when I'm turning my head. And that's just, uh, but I don't actually see those very much. I only see them in the very edge of my vision. So they're a lot less disturbing for me than they are for you guys watching on your monitors. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this mission. We got someone skulking around. They got someone skulking around. Apparently, they don't remember they were hunting for me like two minutes ago. Let me know if you want to take my patrol. Attention, your all citizens. This is a special announcement. Okay, somebody from our saw me, but I think I got away. Oh, this health potion. Lord Regent speaking. It is with regret that I announce that my term as Lord Regent has been extended through the month of. Oh, it's Granny Rags. And potentially. Yo! Hey, I Granny. think the little birdies are sad today. The oh, of the she turned into... The she disappeared. Okay, I forgot she could do that. Alright, let's go visit her downstairs. Yes, I will. See if she has any presents for us. Hey, Granny. Dear? Is that you, my dear husband? I'm just gonna skip the cutscenes, because I played through this game before. All right, let's go down here, grab our present. Yay! Got a rune. This is where the outsider appears. Be careful, Corvo. Talks to us. You're on your way to fi- All right, there we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and race towards the High Overseer. Not gonna get anything else but that one rune. I told you the knives go on. Oh, do I want some of this stuff? Yeah, I do. Okay. Ooh. Mana potion. There we go. Have it your way. We're here. Hey guys. Come on. Let's get this up for the head. I'm just gonna take the whale oil tank out up here and go right through the gate. I think it's the fastest way to go. Kind of weird in this game. You get the stereoscopic. Com oh come on! You get the stereoscopic conflict when you uh, when you pick up an object. Sometimes the object will appear to be um, stereoscopically behind the terrain that's directly in front of you. Ow! How did I just die? Okay, okay. Let's try that again. I'm obviously not taking the stealthy route here. Where did I last save, anyway? Oh, here with Granny. Okay. And the scale, like I said, is really great once granny, I set that setting. Granny, granny, she really looks like the size of an old woman stay. standing in front of me. Granny, 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 Let us in, Granny! And there's, um, at the default settings, I had some issues with the FOV. There's a little bit of warping as I turn my head around. At this setting, I actually find that there's very little, almost no warping as I turn my head. The FOV is nearly spot on. It's very, very good. Okay. It's not perfect FOV like you would see in a native app, but it's very close. Whatever you got, Slackjaw gets a cut. Nothing personal. Just Bottle Street rules. All right, off I go. That's the Bottle Street gang doing their plundering thing. I'm not going to even bother with them. Not going to save that old guy. I don't even care. Just going to be on my way. Climbing is still an uncomfortable animation, but it's not too bad. 
Um, a lot of, like, once you fix this smooth head tracking, a lot of the, the minor issues with the game in VR start to become more apparent now that the major ones are resolved. Um, there are a lot of small examples of that. Like, uh, I mentioned before, the problems with reflections on the water, the problems with swimming. Um, they're better in the DLC, but they're still pretty bad in this version of the game. Um, uh, the, the HUD being fixed is a big is really nice because I can read the subtitles now. I can see um, I, I can see the markers telling me what how to interact with things, lots of stuff like that. Well, is it on? What's it look like? Yes, it's on. Ow! Surprised they didn't hear that. Okay. Never gets old. Oh, I'm out of. Huh? I thought I. Ow! Okay, I'm on very hard mode, which is why this is so hard. Okay, I think I'm just gonna change my difficulty here. Do 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 do. There we go. Dying is still uncomfortable as well because it's throwing your body all over the place. Although I guess dying should be kind of an uncomfortable well, animation. It on? What's it look and it's only brief, so it's not on. like it's going to make you sick. Go on. Toss the okay, there we go. Alright, there we go. Which word? Run, run, run. Okay. Oh wait, I hear a rune. I want that. Hit him. He's yeah. Assassin, help. Ow. Okay, go. Him. All right. Holger Square. This is where Martin is being held. We're just going to release him. So I like to hide my weapons in my hand whenever I can, because it just seems to increase immersion for me. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of, so my hands and my weapon actually look too large by the scale of the rest of the game. And also they move wherever my head moves, which is just not realistic. This game would be much more awesome if the hands and weapon could track according to actual hand controllers. Uh, maybe in some future Dishonored VR, that will be the case. I hear the second day is when the skin really starts to come all the way off. So, there are lean keys or in this game. The they are Q and E. They're actually quite the rats. Uh, very large yeah, leans. Uh, unrealistically so large. But, since I have I positional tracking in this game, I can also use huh. you don't regular, actual, real-life leaning that. to that. lean around and check out what's going on here. And this is actually a useful mechanic for the game because it actually does um, the problem is that it causes me sometimes to lean into my own arms, which is disconcerting since uh, the leaning is happening outside of the game rather than inside the game. I'm just going to release him while the guy is still there. Let's go. Oh, I can't. Hey, what's up? Come back when you're alone. When I'm alone? Fine. There we go. Psst, Corvo. It's me, Overseer Martin. So I've always said I love the feeling of when you're carrying somebody around in this game. It really feels. Let me let me reset my. So you hit Alt Space to reset Corvo. reset now positional I tracking, you I told and you occasionally you have to re reset it. So yeah, this guy's on my shoulder. Sometimes if I turn my head to the right, I like clip inside him. There you are, Corvo. But uh, he really feels like he's right. sitting on my shoulder as I'm walking around, which is very cool. I I like how this feels. When things are right next to you, you can really start to feel Quick, like Corvo. they're in your personal space in VR. Just, just not a sense you get when playing the game normally. Okay, there we go. I don't like how these cutscenes zoom in on people. Straight. And it interacts Thank weirdly you, with this weird aspect ratio as well. What you're here to do tonight. All right, I won't be of any help. But here, now everything so looks back to normal. Way back to the Hound All right, get out of here, Martin. If I see Samuel the boatman, I'll tell him to pick you up. archive about the heretics brand. So here's the part where the overseers tell me about the heretics brand, which is the non-lethal way of dealing 
with the high overseer. Let's go inside there. Yeah. Check this out. A little bit of Tivianor. I like how this. I like how it feels when you're in small containers like this. You feel like you got little walls on every side of you. It's very cozy. Ooh, this, I never noticed that sign before. Distillery District, Golden Cat. We can't enter the Golden Cat until a later mission. I can even stand on the sign. Whoa, this is weird. The sign is a lot bigger up close. This thing looks like it's like six feet long. Okay. I think that's true of signs in the real world too. Oh shit. Like, I think in the real world, if you like go take down a highway sign and like put it in your bedroom, it like, it's like 10 feet long or something. It's just enormous. And from a distance, when you're driving your car, they just don't look that big. Okay. Ah, okay, I didn't expect to climb there. Climbing animations are okay when I expect them. I can kind of plan for that weird feeling. But um, when I don't expect them, they still kind of throw me for a loop. Enough of the hints. I should have turned off hints, really. Okay, um, how do I get around these guys? I think I'm just gonna go under. Ow! Why did I stand on the spiky gate? Okay, use the potion. I love going through the sewer in VR. Oh, this all feels, look at this. It's right next to me, it's all around me. Things are bad. I mean, the frame rate is excellent inside a pipe, of course, because there's not much to render. There we go. Oh, hey guys. Go to sleep. Good night. I wonder if they're going to get worried when they find his corpse. Probably. All right, let's go. I love that I can use the cycle wheel now. Like, like I've memorized most of the keys for all the stuff already, but the cycle wheel is fun to use and it lets you guys see exactly what I'm selecting. And it looks nice. I, I like the cycle wheel in this game. Okay. There we go. Got some bolts. Oh, that shadow looks really wrong. That shadow looks like it's... I don't even know what to make of it. It's like it's floating in front of the surface the shadow is cast on. It's super weird. Okay, let's grab this. A lot of the items in this game look enormous compared to the scale of the rest of the world. There's a very inconsistent scale. And that's a, a, a big problem with traditional games when they're porting them to VR is getting the scale of everything to be consistent like it is in the real world. Um, because in a, in a game, they'll often make an object scale like uh, larger than it should be just so that you can see it better from a distance. Just to have it stand out a little better. Like items or like your own, your own body. And I'm not going to go to the kennel. I'm going to continue my mission. Okay, I can't stand on that gate, so that's not going to work. Oh, hey, rats. I don't like you. White rats, you're okay. You give me mana. Um, you can eat the mana rat, uh, the white rats for mana if you have the right bone charm. I don't have it right now. Okay. I think I'm just going to walk in the front door. I'm, I'm purposely walking instead of running, even though I could be running a lot more. Yeah, you're not setting any alarms. Out of my way! Okay. Let's go inside. Hey, guys. Ow! Don't shoot me. Alright. Let's go up the stairs. Hey, guy. Hello. Goodbye. All right, let's go find the high overseer. Did I say high overseer? Yeah, I think that's right. I hear the watch is having trouble holding the side. Bunch of children playing games. That's all. Oops! It looks like I have animations on. 
the killing animations never are fun in VR. You want to turn those off. I can't believe the high overseer hasn't noticed all the stuff going on out here. Keep each other entertained. All right. I'm not sure how I died on easy mode. That was pretty bad. I don't understand how the now, like I was saying, in order to have the mirror window, which I need in order to record the game stereoscopically, am I all the way back here, really? Um, I have to be running the game in windowed mode. And when I run the game in windowed mode, Dishonored, unfortunately, does not capture the mouse properly. So it's very easy to accidentally click outside the game window, in which case the game loses focus. I saw I lose the game audio. And on top of that, if I accidentally click on the mirror window, it freezes the mirror window. So there's a lot of problems like that. So to get around that, I have um, I have used a, a utility. It's called Capture Capture Mouse Utility or something. And I just set it to um, capture the mouse for me inside the Dishonored window. It's doing a great job. And I just press a hotkey, F7, when I start up the game, and it keeps the mouse inside the window. That way I don't have to worry about accidentally clicking outside it. Uh, this is handy if you are also using the stereoscopic mirror window. Um, unfortunately, when I hit my escape key to go into the menu, it also causes the capture mouse utility to no longer have the mouse captured in the window for some reason. Um, and so I tend to avoid just pressing escape. And if I press escape, I have to hit F7 twice to get back in. So um, I'm, I'm just, I'm working out a lot of the kinks with this workflow and this setup. Okay, now I'm gonna wait for the high overseer to come out. Then I'm gonna deal with him. You know, I'm just gonna switch to drinks here. My men are searching district by district. Switch the poison to... Campbell side. There we go. Callista's a resourceful one. Probably found a safe place to hold up in all this chaos. If my overseers hear anyone, I'll come straight to you. Hello, rat. Time for drinks. I hope you. Oh, come on, come on. Give me the rune. There we go. Okay, it's a little hard to keep track of where my crosshair is. I, I tend to leave the crosshair Servants on in this game, in even though it breaks the immersion a little bit, because it's very hard see, to point at objects without one. it. It's the little white dot that directly one. in front of me. It's very small, no. um, because I have it set to minimal. Ah, uh, I find the default one now to be much me. worse. Um, it's very large Men and distracting. Come, get you when we're finished. come on, Campbell. Come on. There he comes. I don't understand there he comes. how this got so unpleasant. Oh, I agree, I agree. A whore dies, and suddenly this. I'm not Do sure why he wine? doesn't see me peeking through it's a here. Tivian red. Thank you. I'm just gonna lean around now, us. To business. What would you say happened last night? Interesting how he didn't notice that the bottle was missing to be honest, and broken. I'm not even sure. My men, your overseers, a few whores, maybe a little too much ale. So when I One press right against the wall, my weapon is actually later, stereoscopically is behind the wall. Teeth. Which is weird. I wish I'd been there. All right, let's go here. <laughs> Take it easy, there, old son. <laughs> you're supposed to be dead, Campbell, and you're supposed to be coming with me. Ah, now Campbell's dead. Good, good. Where did he go? There he is. Ran out of the room, instantly died. Oh, I've got you now. No, you don't. That guard just saw things he was not supposed to see. All right, run for it. Run for it as fast as you can. Faster than that, come on. So I've mentioned this before, but the, the blink mechanic, the short distance teleportation that's used so heavily in Dishonored, um, is actually a really effective form of locomotion huh? in virtual reality. And I think more and more people are starting to realize this. It's starting to be incorporated into into a lot of modern VR games. Oops. Did they just kill him? Nope, he's okay. I don't know why that, that didn't hurt Kerr now. There 
There we Whoa, that was freaky. He was clipping into the wall there. Okay. Um, and a lot of games are starting to use short-term teleportation, uh, short, short distance teleportation as a way of dealing uh, with the fact that walking around normally is not very comfortable in VR. So they'll have you teleport from one location to another, then just look around a little bit. This also works great for a room scale VR. Uh, because in a room, you, in, in room scale VR, you only have a small amount of space to walk around in. And the exact amount of space you have can vary from person to person. I know her. Out of the way. Oh, uh, let me take care you of these guys. Preferential treatment just because you are there we go. You appeared as if from nowhere. We would both be dead if not for you. No problem. We are forever in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. I must get my sister to safety. But first, I may know of a way to thank you. There's a safe in the bunkhouse. The combination is two, zero, three. Take what you want, and good luck. Thank you. So, interestingly, I could kill them now. I would still be able to get the safe. So, this game has an odd notion of karma. All right, let's go. Um, what was I saying a minute ago? I don't remember. It'll come back to me. I do have a grenade now. Grenades are not super useful in this game, in my opinion. There we go. Oh yeah, I was talking about Blink. So, uh, a lot of VR games are using Blink now, and it works well in room scale VR. Um, because in a room scale VR, you have a limited amount of space, and the amount of space you have varies from one person to another. Um, but, if you just can Blink around, then what happens is whenever you get to a wall, you can just blink to another location. So let's pretend like I'm walking around in room scale VR and the wall is like right here in front of me where this beam is. So I could walk up to this wall and then I can't walk any farther because there's no more room in the real world. But what I can do is I can just teleport over here and then I can turn around and I can walk around some more in this space and now I'm in this other part of the space now and I can still walk around in the room. So, um, so if you're not familiar, room scale VR is when you can uh, have VR in a, in, a, in a whole room space and you can walk around in the whole room and it results in your character walking around the exact same size space in the game. And there's a lot of tricks to making that work with a game like this where the world is much larger than the room that you're playing the game. Uh, so easy to kill. I'm not going for low chaos right now. I'm just trying to finish this stage. That'll be it for today. So, I mean, Vorpex is massively improved now. Ow! Jesus. You didn't see anything? Okay. On my way. Um, let's get up on the roof here. All right. So, oh, I'm almost to Samuel. So. It's, it's much smoother with the asynchronous time warp. I think that's the biggest improvement in Vorpex. Um, it's much more, it's much easier to not have to go into edge peak mode constantly, to have that HUD appearing much smaller in front of me, the 2D HUD. And, and um, it, it has better support for a lot of games. It has full support for DK2. And, and you get much better performance and quality now that you can use resolutions that have an 8-9 aspect ratio like I'm doing right now. I posted a little guide on how to, how to set up a, resol a custom resolution like this on Reddit. And I am just, I'm just massively happier with the way Vorpix has improved since the last time I've used it. And I can't wait. What's the, can I fall in the water here? I think I can. Got to be careful not to fall on the rocks like an idiot. Um, and I'm just, I'm super happy with how Warpex has improved. And it's really a product that keeps, keeps up. Ow, water effects are different in each eye. And I'm just really happy with how the product has improved over time and, and how I'm confident hey, it's going Corvo. to be in it's the Samuel. best solution really for, for playing here. traditional games on, on the consumer version of the Oculus Rift. From the way I hear it, Campbell lived a pretty posh life. Maybe it's not my place to say, but men of the faith shouldn't live like barons. Are you ready to go? 
I'm ready to go. If you're ready to go, Samuel. Let's go. Okay, let's go. So I'm just going to switch over into virtual cinema mode here for just a minute. There we go. So, as you can see, I killed like everybody. Somehow I what? I got low chaos? I got low chaos on that run. Can you believe that? Oh my god. Apparently you can just kill a whole bunch of dudes for no reason and you still get low chaos. I guess it was because I I just didn't encounter a lot of enemies. I don't know. So this has been... Oh, is that actually shining? Oh, it's actually doing the thing where it uh, illuminates the room and your own avatar um, based on what what's currently appearing on the screen. Oh, that's working. That is great. That is really nice. Okay, so this has been Vorpex 0 0.9 on the very latest Oculus SDK, and it is awesome and it is exciting. Um, oh, there's one more little thing I didn't mention about the, the stereo. Um, and it's just an issue with the stereo where uh, the stereo window looks a little undersaturated and washed out. And I'm just uh, processing the levels in post to compensate for that in Premiere. It's kind of weird that there's like literally only one choice of avatar you can have here in the cinema. And it's like some, some white guy wearing a Vorpex shirt, apparently. So maybe there will be a little bit a little bit more options for avatar in the future. Maybe you can customize. I don't know. I, it's, it's not a huge thing. Just slightly, uh, slightly takes you out of it. Um, anyway, this has been Vorpix 0.9. Let me know if you've tried it, what kind of titles you tried it with. Let me know um, any Vorpix compatible titles you'd like to see me playing in the future. I'm always happy to play um, your favorite traditional games here in VR using Vorpix. And, um, and let me know any other things you'd like to see me play. Um, I'm going to be updating with Wind Waker and with Telos Principle in the next couple days. And I will see you guys next time. Everybody have a great every day.